Hey everybody, Bill here. Uh, I've got some tips and tricks to make your experience with Orcs Must Die 3 on Google Stadia even better. If you didn't know, this is StadiaCast and this is a YouTube channel and a podcast all about Google Stadia, which you can check out Sundays, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern, or if you want to download the podcast to your uh, favorite podcasting app and listen to us while we while you're doing other stuff, then head on over to anchor.fm slash StadiaCast, or you can just search for StadiaCast in whatever podcasting app you use. With all of that being said, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and bell, and let's get started with Orcs Must Die 3 tips and tricks. So the first thing that I would like to talk about are the weapons. Depending on which character you chose at the beginning, you will either start with a bow or a blunderbuss. I'm going to start with the bow, and I'll talk about the blunderbuss in a moment. Uh, All weapons have a primary and a secondary attack. The primary attack uh, can be fired off as many times as you want. The secondary attack, however, uses mana. The primary attack for the bow feels kind of like a sniper shot, And the secondary attack is a spread of arrows that I think, depending on how long you hold down the secondary attack for, will determine how wide of an area that you hit with your arrows. If you tap the the secondary attack button, you'll shoot out three arrows. If you uh, hold it for a little bit, you'll shoot out four arrows. And if you hold it down until it's at its maximum amount, you will shoot out five arrows. So uh, you get to decide how much time you're holding down that ability for before you let it go. Now, for primary attacks, what the game doesn't tell you is that you can just hold down your primary attack button and it will just keep shooting nonstop as fast as you possibly can rather than tapping the attack button over and over. I don't feel like this game makes it clear that that's what you should do, but you should definitely do that because it makes it so much easier to uh, hit the orcs when you're just holding down the button rather than tapping it. The next thing that the game doesn't really make clear is the secondary attack for the bow is a charged attack, and you can hold it down, and when you first pull the trigger, it's going to spend that mana, but then that man is going to regenerate even before you let go of your attack. So you can hold that 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 attack down and spend that mana up front and just wait until the appropriate time to let go of your secondary attack. This means that you can kind of hold a secondary attack in place ready to go at a moment's notice. And you might be wondering, well, hold on a sec, Bill then I can't do my primary attack. But yes, you can. And the game doesn't tell you this either. You can hold a charge on a secondary attack and fire your primary attack holding that secondary charge to let go whenever you need to. It's really, really cool and a powerful combination, and the game does not tell you that. Let's move on and talk about the blunderbuss. The blunderbuss is more of a shotgun-style weapon. Now, whereas the bow has unlimited ammo... The blunderbuss has a, an ammo clip of four. Now, you can't run out of ammo, but you will have to reload after four shots. Uh, less snipery, more of a scattershot uh, kind, of, um, kind of attack. So you get, you get to fire off four shots, and then you have to reload. Reloading is pretty quick, and you can make it even faster by upgrading things, which I'll talk about later on in the video. Uh, so the secondary attack for the blunderbuss is not a chargeable attack. It's not like the um, the bow where you can kind of store it and be ready at a moment's notice. Instead, it fires off a little bomb that will either explode on a timer or it will explode when an orc comes into contact with it. Uh, so depending on which style of weapon you like, You know, you're going to end up picking a character based on that. But keep in mind that all of the characters can use all of the weapons. At least that's what it seems like so far after quite a few hours with this game at this point. Okay, now that we've got weapons out of the way, let's talk about traps. There's a bunch of different uh, traps that you can get in the game. When you first start out, you have very, very few traps 
But that doesn't mean that you uh, should only stick to one because there is something in the game called combos which can really, really make uh, your life easier in this game. So let's talk about combos. A combo is basically killing enemies with three or more sources of damage. Damage being uh, the, having the orc in the air, uh, having them be stunned or frozen or slowed or on fire. Uh, and if you have three or more of those sources combined, that creates a combo. And the bigger the combo, the bigger the score and the bigger the rune coin payout that you'll get from killing that particular monster which means that you'll be able to spend more on the next wave by getting higher combos. So you really want to focus on having a bunch of combos and having what I guess would be called kill boxes. In order to make a kill box, you want to place a large amount of traps in a tight space or in a specific way to maximize the damage that you do and the combos. Making a good kill box could entail like checkerboarding your floor traps, uh, making sure that you have ceiling space and adding the right amount of crowd control to force your enemies to walk through the traps more than once. So you get the enemies to go through the traps a bunch of different times. You make sure that you have a bunch of different types of traps and you that makes sure that you hit them with at least three types of damage now you're going to get these huge, huge scores and lots and lots of rune points in order to spend, or rune coins, I guess, in order to spend on the next set of traps. The crowd control that I'm talking about could be barricades. So once you get past level four, you will be awarded with barricades and you can even upgrade them to get bigger uh, and uh, have more health as the game goes on. Basically, you use the barricades in order to funnel the enemies into the kill box or even down a completely different hallway in the level. So uh, there's a level that I can't remember which one it is, but what I ended up doing was I put down barricades in order to force all of the orcs to go down one path so that I only had one path to worry about setting traps on. That way I could put all of my path, all of my traps on one path instead of having them split up across multiple paths, meaning that it made it a whole lot easier in order for me to kill each and every orc before they got to my rift. So when setting your traps down, you also want to pay attention to what the orcs are weak against. Some orcs are very weak against physical attacks, but they are, are strong against physical attacks, but they're weak against elemental attacks. Some of them are really weak against specific attacks like lightning, or maybe they are very weak against headshots. If you know what your enemies are weak against, then you can plan around that. So later on in the game, you can actually upgrade some of your traps to do elemental damage, and you get to pick what kind of elemental damage that they may do. For instance, I believe the spike trap will give you the option to either go with arcane damage or with lightning damage. And if you have certain enemies on the board, you might want to use element um, lightnings this time and then next time go with arcane. So that's definitely something that you want to pay attention to. Lastly, you can refund your upgrades to try out different traps and upgrades as much as you like. It doesn't cost you anything in order to uh, start from scratch. You can refund every single skull that you have spent, get all of them back, and then go down a completely different path. Maybe you don't like using the uh, arrow wall traps anymore and you want to focus on uh, spike traps. So get all of your skulls back, spend them in the spike traps, and try it out and see how it works. Try buying new traps, weapons, and trinkets with your skulls if sending enemies one way does not yield the five skull um, mark, which is really hard to get, by the way, send them another way. Uh, experimentation is how you can get like times 10, times 11, times 12 combos. Maybe you can even get higher than that. I think the highest that I've seen so far is like times six. And I, I was like really, really happy with that. But you can get even higher uh, according to uh, Robot Entertainment. So two more quick tips before I get out of here. Number one, 
It's good to try and do damage close to the doors where the enemies are arriving. If you let the orcs get too close to the rift without taking damage, you could find yourself falling behind. And trust me, there's so many orcs that are going to come through uh, these doors. You do not want to fall behind. You can quickly go from having uh, 20 um, slots left on your rift to being almost out on just one wave if they get past you. It's really, really tough uh, to do that. Now, the opposite is you, you also want to hang out near your rift if you're running low on health or mana. The rift actually heals you. So anytime that you are getting low and you can't find a potion on uh, the ground, run back to the rift. You can heal and replenish your mana even before you press the go button. So those are a few tips and tricks for Orcs Must Die 3. If you have tips and tricks, things that I didn't think of, things that I didn't talk about, things that you've done that you have found really, really effective, leave them in the comment section down below for other people. And uh, if you want to see more stuff like this, make sure that you like, subscribe, and click the bell. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time, maybe even on the battlefield. Bye.